Okay, welcome back to uh, another video here at Wood Turning Tool Store. Uh, we're creating a large ash hollow form um, using the Lyle Jamison hollowing system. So uh, here we've got the log between centers creating the uh, outer shape, a large uh, four inch tenon and uh, finalizing the outer shape. Once we get that done, um, we'll stick it between, or sorry, in the chuck and then uh, um, drill out the center hole uh, to begin with. Uh, that's going to help us uh, start the hollowing. And then once we got the hole drilled, we just do a final pass on the outside to true up the final shape and, uh, and, and get everything set for, uh, for hollowing. So uh, stick around and enjoy. Okay, final uh, cleanup, like I said, and uh, then we'll move into setting up the hollowing. First, I got to say, go and get the instructions uh, from Lyle's uh, website. You can get to us from Wood Turning Tool Store, looking for Lyle Jameson, clicking on one of the products within there. Uh, go ahead and click on the button to uh, take you to Lyle's site. Uh, I am an affiliate, so getting there uh, uh, that way is easy. Uh, scroll down, you'll see uh, down below uh, in the descriptions, uh, the very first line is click here to uh, for the installation instructions. Click that tab, it's going to open up a PDF document for you to look at. Jamison Tool System Installation Instructions. It's important that you go through and follow these instructions very carefully. It's going to allow you to set up the hollowing system in a manner that's uh, prescribed and will get you the best results. So be sure to go through them uh, all the way, uh, go through the detail, it makes the system level out correctly, make sure when you insert the, the tool uh, bits that they're going to line up correctly. So very important, go ahead and do that and uh, then we'll get started. Uh, with the instructions read through, now it's time to set up the, uh, the backrest. Now we take the flange underneath and uh, move that between the bedways and uh, in, a, in a way that it's going to lock the backrest down with the star knob. So uh, position it with the long arm of the D-rest on the right side of the lathe or the far side. Um, that's where the D-handle is going to uh, move the most. So. Once that's in place, get your tool rest in place, and then we'll move on to the, uh, the handle installation. Okay, now uh, the D-handle installation. It's got a um, clip pin in a hole in the back, and once you get the handle, D-handle in place, put that uh, spring clip back in place. That's going to prevent the, the D-handle from falling out as you pull it. Uh, forward towards the turning. So now is a good time to kind of adjust or adjust the uh, position of the backrest, um, knowing how deep your vessel is and how far away the backrest needs to be to get the tool into the vessel and to the bottom. The master package of the Jamison system comes with uh, two swivel arm assemblies. Uh, the well, straight one and a bent swivel. Uh, each of those have a high-speed steel cutter in it. The uh, master system comes with a carbide cup cutter uh, and that I've installed in the straight swivel and am installing that into the bar. Um, at this point, it's the instructions say to take your time to make sure that you get the set screw uh, aligned perfectly on top of the flat of the swivel arm. Uh, this is where the instructions are important to get everything kind of leveled out. And so I make take my time and tighten that up. So on to the next step. At this point, I'm just um, turning on the lathe and uh, seeing how well the cup cutter cuts. And in this shot, it's just a couple of seconds of overhead. You can see I got chips flying. So these are the first initial cuts, uh, kind of cleaning off the top surface of the, uh, of the holoform. Uh, you'll note here I'm not using the, the laser guide. 
Uh, this is a rough turning, and so I'm just cutting uh, a three-quarter inch wall thickness by eye. Here you can see a better view of what's happening with the uh, tool. Uh, the uh, carbide cutter is angled in such a way that it's slicing the wood. Uh, this is great for end grain hollowing, so uh, going back and forth from center to the outer, uh, even can probably go back the same the other way as well. Uh, creates a great finish. This piece of ash has a good punky section down the uh, pith, so that's that dark stained area. I had no trouble cutting through both the good wood and the punky wood. So Here I've made myself a little wooden gauge to try and adjust the center, uh, the, the position of the tool rest to get the cutter on center. I've actually found that uh, this little piece of wood I've got chiseled out I use it to gap the bottom of the tool rest to the banjo. This uh, height, this the way uh, I'm showing was difficult to do. Uh, you'll see in a second here, right here, it's just off the bottom. I'm using the thickness of the wood to set the height. Uh, I would suggest to do something like that. It's a quick and easy solution um, if you don't have the adjustable tool rest that Lyle says and uh, use me your own. Uh, use that, uh, use a trick of some sort uh, to get uh, your tool rest to the proper height to cut to right on center. Uh, some more cutting action showing how easy it is to control and use this tool. This angle shows uh, the fingertip control. It's uh, really easy to kind of use this tool uh, with the majority of the tool build being held in the backrest and the D handle is in there. Um, makes it super easy to maneuver this tool. Uh, quick tip, uh, wax the, uh, the backrest and the D handle. Uh, make things smoother as well as the top of your tool rest. We're getting a little deeper in the hollowing, uh, probably about seven to eight inches deep here. Uh, it's still uh, easy to use. Uh, the carbide is lasting the whole time for this uh, 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 one setting. Um, yeah, definitely uh, an easy tool to use. I'll be doing a lot more hollowing with the Lyle Jamison hollowing system.